Well, good morning to you. It is a Thursday. That's right. March the 25th. We are moving through this month. Great to have you with us on Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. We've got a great show lined up for you. And if you're one of our students, well, we're going to get some answers to your questions coming up about our summer and fall registration. All that and more. And it's Thursday, Virtual Family Fun Day. We've got a special guest joining us for that. Every Thursday, though, Brittany Pacheco is my co-host, and she's here this morning. Good morning to you, Brittany. Hey, good morning, Todd, and good morning to everyone joining us this morning for Thursday's Up to the Minute. Like Todd mentioned, we are going to get some questions answered for our students. I'm very excited for you all because I'm a student myself, you know, in the online world, and I'd like to go back to some kind of normalcy eventually, but... Before we get into today's show, I do want to remind everyone to take the opportunity to follow us on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And last but not least, from our audience, we need your help. Yes, that's right. We need your help spreading the word about up to the minute. So in the bottom right corner of this broadcast, be sure to click that share button. That way it pops up on your personal news feed. And mainly... You know, we want to spread the word of this great information, especially when it comes to our students and enrollment. And what more can I say, Todd? Let's get into today's show. All right, Brittany, stick around. We'll be checking in with you later on in the show. It is Thursday, Virtual Family Fun Day. We have various guests from around the country and even here in the city of Houston. Right now, Perry Price, he's the executive director of the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft. He's joining us this morning. Good morning to you, Perry. Good morning, Todd. Happy to be here. Glad to have you with us. We're looking forward to uh, talking with you in a few minutes. So I'm going to ask you to stand by and we'll get to our first guest right now. Dr. Shante Grays is the Vice Chancellor of Student Service Services. It's good to have you with us, Dr. Grays, on the show. Good to see you again. Good morning. Thank you, Todd. It's, it's good to be back. Excited to share the news that we have for our students regarding registration. Now, I know there's been a lot of questions our students have, and earlier this month, we received a memo about the Flex Campus classes and other course options. When we appreciate you coming on to clear up some of the uh, the uh, confusion, maybe, or just to, to set the record straight, but could you tell us about the memo and what you wanted to get across to students? So we're so excited to share with our students that we have uh, opened up the class schedule for both summer and fall. Um, we're planning to open the fall schedule a lot earlier than we have in the past. But summer classes, um, we are also excited to share. We're, we've eliminated the flex campus uh, option, but we will have some on-campus uh, delivery. So for those students who um, are long for that face-to-face -face traditional uh, method of instruction where we heard you and we're excited because we know um, now that we have uh, more vaccinations um, opening up to our, our residents in Houston, um, we're feeling a lot more comfortable about going back into that environment. So I'm excited about those opportunities that we'll be able to, to meet the needs of our students. Um, we are also providing, um, we'll continue to offer the hybrid learning model. So for those students who want um, some instructional delivery online and some face-to-face, -face, that's still an option, as well as our asynchronous um, uh, and synchronous online options as well. I think, uh, Dr. Graves, one of the key words you mentioned there were vaccinations. You know, many of us have at least it started receiving the vaccinations or at least one dose or two doses in many cases. But starting Monday, it looks like all Texans over the age of 16 can now register for a vaccination. This obviously this news had to play into your plan with wanting to get students back on campus. Well, and, and you're right, Todd, while we anticipated that there would be more availability of the vaccine to Texans, um, we, we knew that we still had to play um, some role of caution um, when thinking about that. That's why we're continuing to offer um, those online options for students. But um, our most of our workforce classes require some face-to-face -face interaction with the, with the faculty. There's a lab-based component that requires a hands-on interaction um, with the equipment and the tools needed. So we also had to anticipate um, that we'd have a safer um, opening option, um, knowing that there would be an increased likelihood for more, more residents to be vaccinated um, once it became more readily available. So Monday's news was just what we call in Louisiana lag nap. Um, yeah. It helps to really solidify uh, the decision around making um, those online classes and face-to-face -face classes more accessible to our students. 
And for those of you who aren't from Louisiana, lanyap means a little bit something extra, all right? a little something extra. All right, so um, summer 2021 registration's underway. What can you tell us of what students can expect when they uh, go back to campuses or when they register for the 2021 summer classes? So registration for summer is underway for the first uh, summer session, mini session, and it's already begun. Um, so students can see now, they can access those classes. They will see the variety of learning modalities that I just mentioned available starting this summer. Um, so we know our first summer mini session begins on May 17th. And we have a series of uh, what we called our first summer session, which is a 10-week session, five weeks and eight weeks. That begins June 7th. Um, so when students go into the class schedule, they'll see uh, the courses that are available as well as the options for taking those classes either online or through one of the um, other delivery methods that we shared. Um, we're encouraging students to take advantage of, of registration now um, because it's we know that those classes, particularly those high demand, um, what we call academic core classes, tend to fill up very, fairly quickly. So the classes will still be small based on CDC guidelines from what you're saying. So more than ever, it's important for our students to register early, get the times that you want for your convenience. Absolutely. Uh, we will still adhere to those protocols. We're still uh, following the standards. So when students come to campus, they'll see lots of signage about washing their hands. Um, they will still be expected to wear masks on campus um, because we do want to protect those individuals who may still be vulnerable um, and those knowing that it will take some time for everyone to be vaccinated. Um, so we're asking that students still adhere to, to the guidelines and protocols that the institution has established so that we can make their learning environment as safe as possible. Dr. Graves, I know you mentioned them just a moment ago, but during the summer, this past summer, we introduced four different ways of learning. Now there appears to be five. Maybe you can go over those real briefly and tell us what they are so students know what they're looking for when they register for classes. Good point, Todd. Um, so we have, um, as you shared, we have five options, online anytime, um, which is the traditional flexible classes that allow students um, with without structured um, schedule um, to take those courses that are most convenient for them during the times that's most convenient. We have online on a schedule. That means there is a set time and date um, that students have the ability to interact with their peers and with their instructor. Um, we also provide the hybrid lab class, um, which meets face-to-face -face, um, and on campus virtually, um, on campus and virtually. Um, so it gives a, a lab component um, where there may be 50% of the instruction delivered virtually and the other 50% um, online. Um, it just depends on the type of instruction that's being offered. We also offer the hybrid course, which is all lecture um, that meets safely face-to-face -face, um, and virtually as well. So there's a lab component as well as a lecture, um, uh, I'm sorry, hybrid lab courses uh, and then our hybrid um, lecture uh, traditional courses. And then lastly, it's our in-person class, um, which you know, as you know, we've not had in-person classes for our traditional um, programs for since almost a year now. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to be able to, um, with a very safe and very, um, I think, precautious method of opening up these classes so that students can come back to campus so that our staff uh, and faculty can also return safely. And for the students who are going to be uh, returning, or maybe they may have more questions for you, is your staff available? I know you're available virtually, but are is your staff meeting with people in person uh, on a limited basis as well if they want to meet with you for various needs? We do have student services staff available on campus. Um, it is in a limited capacity. That's why we're encouraging students to schedule those appointments. Go to the HCCS uh, virtual lobby, which is available and accessible on our homepage to schedule that appointment to meet with advisors, there's counselors, um, or for those students who have to take the placement exam, um, you are required to schedule that test in advance so that staff can adequately ensure that we're uh, allowing for um, proper social distancing and cleaning. Um, so for those students who um, are not as comfortable with the virtual setting, uh, we do have face-to-face -face, um, student services available at each of our six colleges, and we're encouraging students to take advantage of those services as well. 
Dr. Gray's, one of the things I ran into, and I've been to campuses very limited times um, for certain business, but I was on campus, I can think the last two times, and I had one person approach me out in the parking lot asking about registration. And then when I got on a campus and went through the screening, another uh, one student, the person that wanted to be a student came in and was going to go through the screening and ask about registration. Are you encouraging students to go to the campuses or would you prefer to them do it online or are you accepting both? Because I know some in the past, some students may just wanna to go to one of our campuses to learn more about registering at HCC. And I think you make an excellent point, Todd. So we know that our students who are currently enrolled are now familiar with the online environment. In fact, most of our students register are able to self-register using uh, the student services portal. Um, so we, we definitely encourage those students who can take advantage of the virtual process to do so. Um, but we also know that we have a large number of prospective students who have questions and um, um, concerns about financial aid and the admissions process, um, which is why we do have staff available on campus okay. um, and we are encouraging those individuals who have a need uh, for that face-to-face -face support to reach out to um, to schedule those appointments and certainly take advantage of, of the opportunity to visit with one of our professionals on campus as needed. Dr. Grays, I know um, you know one of the goals of all of our students is to eventually graduate one day and move on somewhere else, whether it be another institution or out into the job market. Um, spring commencement, a uh, big thing for HCC. Maybe you can tell us a little bit of how it's going to go this year. This is probably the most exciting time of the year for us, Todd. Um, you are very well connected to the work that we're doing, but it is an opportunity for us to celebrate the achievements of our graduates, especially in light of where we are with COVID. Um, so I'm happy to announce that we have scheduled, again, virtual commencement ceremonies for uh, three uh, classes of students. We have our general certificates and degrees. Um, that uh, commencement is scheduled on Friday, May 14th at 1 p.m. online, um, as well as our bath ceremony for our students with um, special abilities. Um, we're recognizing their achievements on Friday, May 14th at 10 a.m. And then our text chase, um, which is our high school equivalency uh, graduates, uh, that ceremony will be held Thursday, May 13th at 6 p.m. Um, all ceremonies will be available live, uh, via stream on our hccs.edu slash graduation website. Again, if you have more questions, um, feel free to visit the website that I mentioned, hccs.edu slash graduation. Uh, we have some great speakers um, for the virtual, the general ceremony. We're proud to share that uh, County Judge uh, Hil Lena Hidalgo uh, will be our keynote speaker. So we're excited to hear from the County Judge. Um, we know that she's been very hard, uh, working very hard to keep Houstonians uh, safe in this uh, very different and um, global pandemic. Um, so to have her take the, a moment about her, out of her time to congratulate our graduates and share a message of hope, um, it's certainly exciting. That is very exciting with Judge Hidalgo being on there. Um, one final question, and it looks like a mystery question. You have some plans about the summer that you're willing to reveal. Can you tell us about that? I have plans about the summer that I'm willing to reveal? Huh. Let's see. I, I'm not sure if it was that a question for me or for someone. I, I'm looking here and I thought maybe this was a mystery question, but uh, maybe it was involving summer, summer registration. I think it's just involving summer okay. registration. All uh, right. we, All right. yeah, we, we're excited. Again, I think the, the mystery is we're back on campus. So uh, as much as we can, yeah. we want to encourage students who have a need to come back to us. Uh, we're ready to welcome them safely um, and enthusiastic about the return. All right, Dr. Shante Grays, our Vice Chancellor of Student Services here at HCC. Thanks for being here on the show and we'll see you soon. I know I will later on this afternoon for a meeting. Thank you, Todd. You guys have a great rest of your day. You too. All right, we're gonna move on to Perry Price. He's the Executive Director of the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft and he's our Thursday Virtual Family Fund guest. Good to have you on the show. Uh, Perry, can you tell us first off, give us an overview for folks who may not be familiar with the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft. Um, what exactly is your museum? Can people visit it? Are you guys back open? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, we're very happy to be able to welcome people back to the center. As you know, most cultural institutions in Houston have had to go through a little bit of a period of adjustment, but we are open again. Um, we're located at 4848 Main Street in the Museum District. We're just next door to Lawndale Art Center and just up the street from the Museum of Fine Arts. We're a free art center, so anyone is welcome to come by at any time that we're open to the public. But now, of course, under COVID, we're asking for people to come to our website and make a reservation in advance 
Uh, we do have some visiting protocols that we ask everybody to, to abide by while they're here, but we're, our doors are open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and we're really looking forward to people sharing with what we have as a cultural institution with the city of Houston. We focus on contemporary craft. Mm -hmm. We're a non-collecting institution, so that means anytime you come here, what you're seeing is uh, up to the minute contemporary expressions of contemporary craft. Um, new exhibitions are always happening, so if you don't like what you see the first time, come back in three months, we'll have something new for you to see. We also have a program of educational uh, activities, workshops, summer camps, um, hands-on activities for kids and for their parents. And then we also have a nationally recognized artist residency program. So we have artists who are in the building who are happy to share what they're working with and working on with visitors at any time. Well, that's what I'm reading in my notes. That sounds pretty interesting because you have some on-site studios where the guests can actually visit with these artists in the re in uh, residency pr in the residency program, correct? That's right. So we have four studios in the building itself. They're right next door to all the public and exhibition areas of the center. So it's not like you have to go into a back room to see what these artists are up to. We attract residents from all over the country. And in fact, we have artists who come here to Houston from all over the world to participate in this program. Uh, they're here for a period of time between three months and a year. And the center provides them with studio space where they have 24 hour access to work on whatever they're working on as a practicing artist. But what we ask them to do is when we're open to the public, have their doors open and to invite people into their studios to share what they're working on, to show the materials and the processes, the successes and failures of what they're dealing with as practicing artists. You know, one of the things that we like to share with people is that um, the work that you see in a gallery, that finished product is the result of hours and hours of training, hours of experimentation. And for uh, many people, this is the first time they have an experience of talking to a practicing artist and seeing what they're doing. And since craft is so much about material and process, we really like to make that part of the experience for visitors when they come to the building. You know, it must be an, it must be a, a good news in the Houston area because it seems like over the last 10 years, we've had so many different studios. You know, if you go near the silos, you've got Winter Street, Summer Street, Spring Street. Um, we've got your gallery. And Houstonians now, you know, compared to what, 20, 25 years ago, we had Lawndale in certain areas. But now you've got so many places where people can get in, meet artists, purchase some of their works, learn more about them, or just have a Sunday stroll to where you can go see some nice art. That's got to be good news for your business. You know, we're really happy to be part of that. This fall will actually be the 20th anniversary of the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft. And so we're really proud to be part of the arts community here in Houston. You know, one of the things that I think we all are spoiled by as Houstonians, but is almost a secret nationally, is just what a robust arts community we do have here in the city of Houston and how accessible it is to everyone. And so that artist residency program is a big part of the way that we try to uh, engender an experience of craft in the city. And one of the things we're very proud of is how many of our resident artists choose to stay in Houston for at least a period of time after their residency is over, and then again, contribute to that great arts community that we have here. When people come out there, what are some of the current uh, exhibitions that they can view in your gallery? So we have three excellent exhibitions up right now, and they all have a Houston component, or at least a Texas component. We have a show that is the juried exhibition of the contemporary Houston hand weavers. This is an anniversary exhibition of this guild, their work that's been juried in by members of this organization, and it's just been installed absolutely beautifully. You can see what some of the best hand weavers in the city are producing. We also have an exhibition by Anna Mayer, who is a local sculptor and ceramicist, and this is a a mid-career mid um, assembly of a lot of different bodies of work that she's been creating over a period of years. It's a really stunning examination of how ceramics and other craft media can be interacting with day-to-day -day and larger cultural issues that we have going on. For example, when she was based in California, she has this amazing uh, series of work where she was uh, embedding bisque fired which is this in-between period of ceramics where it's not leather clay hard anymore but it hasn't been fully fired around the hills of california and waited for the wildfires to finish off those pieces oh, of wow. and so it's a really powerful body of work that we have installed here and then lastly we're extremely proud of a texas master program where we recognize some of the masters of their 
um, craft disciplines in the state. And we have the ceramic work of James Watkins, who is a Lubbock-based ceramicist. And you can come see a retrospective selection of all of the work that he's been producing over his remarkable career. For those who may not be feel comfortable with getting out just yet, you know, um, you also have some virtual programs online. What can people check out with your virtual, off, virtual offerings? Yeah, we worked really diligently about a year ago to figure out how we could pivot to providing an experience of the Craft Center virtually. And so we have a variety of programs that you can find on our website that range from uh, hands-on activities that you can do for yourself or with your family, all the way to lectures, talks, and studio visits and exhibition walkthroughs that we've been able to deliver virtually. So we have chats with the resident artists in their studio with our curatorial fellow, if you're not interested in being able to come to the center. We have gallery walkthroughs and tours, so you can see the work on view if you're not comfortable coming in yourself or you're unable to do so. And then we have a series of talks with our artists, with curators, with people from the artistic community of Houston. And then, as I mentioned, we have a variety of classes and workshops, so you can get your hands dirty yourself, even then, even if, if you have to stay at home. Um, finally, uh, would I know you've got some summer camp ideas for kids. Parents are always looking for those. Yeah, so we're really proud to be able to deliver a, a craft-based camp for students as young as five. And we are gonna be delivering those virtually this year. And so what we will be doing is providing all the materials, all of the instruction, it's gonna be self-directed. So if your uh, schedule doesn't allow you to have to follow a, a, a strict schedule, you'll be able to do those in a self-directed way. And then of course, our instructors will be available to help out in any way that you can. We really encourage people to visit our website, which is crafthouston.org, which has a list of our camps, our workshops, all of those virtual programs that will be happening. Okay, once again, the website to find you guys, can you tell us one more time? We're also gonna have it in the social media post for the show, Perry. Absolutely, it's crafthouston.org, and that's craft with a C. All right, Perry Price, Executive Director of the Houston Craft for Contemporary. We appreciate you being here on the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much, it was a pleasure. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move on to Brittany Pacheco with our HCC news and announcements. So Brittany, um, we've been mentioning this before, but last month kind of threw us in a tailspin with the winter storm, and it really hindered a lot of activities we had planned for Black History Month, but we're making those up and we've got one of them today. That's right. So you can join the Office of Student Life as it wraps up its events that were rescheduled due to last month's winter storm. So coming up, Black Literature, that's happening today at 1 p.m. We're going to be joined by Cree Miles and uh, share why you know Black Literature is important. So you can be sure to check out our links in the post after the show, and you can register um, by checking your emails. All right, free groceries. Food insecurity is a very big deal here in the Houston area, and it's a reality for many of our students and really for a lot of our community. HCC is trying to battle that problem. We have a partnership with the Houston Food Bank, and especially their community health market trailers. They were formerly known as the Eagle Food Market. They're now going to be at several HCC campuses. All you have to do is sign up pick your campus and go pick up your groceries. It's very easy. You can email them at hccs.cares at hccs.edu. Rex Sports, Brittany, they've got a lot of things underway. And I've already told Frank Cooper that he cannot compete in these. I know he likes these games, but he can't compete in them. Only students can win. Yeah, that's right. So Rex Sports, uh, with spring underway, they have their uh, lineup of virtual events now. I'm not going to go into great detail, but just to give you an idea of what's coming up, we've got NBA uh, 2K21, uh, we've got Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournament, March Madness, because that's going on right now, and then the National uh, Rocket League Tournament. So if you're interested in any of these events, um, we're going to give you that information of times and registration through uh, email. Uh, you can you can email uh, Rec Sports by typing in sports at hcs.edu. They also have their own uh, Instagram page now, Todd. So yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're over, uh, HC, they're, they're not over, but HCC Athletics is over them. They have their own social media pages as well. And simply just type in HCCS Athletics and you'll get all that great information. So be sure students to participate in uh, these fun virtual events. Frank, like Todd said, can't participate. So you have a chance of winning something good. <laughs> 
Yeah, because he would. He said that he would win all these games. So <laughs> probably, and some of these prizes actually are, you know, money. So you can yeah. win up to a hundred dollars in prizes, and that's yeah, really cool. A hundred bucks. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Use that. All right. So uh, every Friday is our Film Fridays here on Up to the Minute. Uh, but there's a filmmaking learning series with Jordan Brady that's happening uh, noon to 2 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, March 31st. So that is next Wednesday. Uh, noon to 2 p.m. Jordan Brady, he's a commercial director, will conduct a Q&A for students who have taken the master class. You can register by sending an email to Michael Cohn, and we'll give you his email address in the social media post for the show. So, Brittany, um, that winter storm, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of folks are still recovering from that with our faculty and staff, and we've got some financial aid assistance available for them. We do. So the HCC President's Council and Foundation is offering an employee disaster relief fund for those affected by the recent winter storm. Now, the fund will provide a one-time non-taxable payment of either $150 or $300. Either full-time or part-time employees can apply, but this is on a first-come, first-served basis for qualifying applicants with a gross annual salary under $100,000. So questions, of course, regarding the application process and awarding of funds may be directed to hcc.disasterrelief at hcs.edu. That email will include in the post after this show. All right, folks, back to other news. As you heard earlier with uh, Dr. Shante Graves, who was on the show, summer registration's open right now. We've got five ways to learn. Um, go to the website, check it out. There's options for everybody, and we're anticipating the return of face-to-face -face classes at our all of our campuses starting this summer. Summer registration for summer, regis summer one is underway now. The big kicker here is that we're starting fall registration very soon. Soon, April the 12th, it opens up. You can register for fall classes. Yes, we're hoping to get the face-to-face -face classes back, but they're going to be very small according to CDC guidelines to keep you safe. And you'll need to register ahead of time to get the classes you need. So check it out today. Don't let financial aid or uh, having to pay stop you from doing this. Check out the payment plans and financial aid options all of them are available. Go to hccs.edu slash now for all of your information regarding that. Okay, tomorrow on the show, you won't be here. Frank will be back. And yeah, he'll be back. And we've got uh, a Houston Chronicle film critic on the show, Brittany. That's right. It's Film Friday. So we're bringing back Carrie Darling from the Houston Chronicle, who's a film critic, who will recap this year's Oscar nominees, but we'll also discuss the dear departed River Oaks Theater, which says goodbye this week. And uh, also, Say Michael Flanagan. Today. today. That's, that's today, today. your correct time. Yeah. Last, um, the la they have, they're having a candlelight vigil when the last motion picture screening gets out. When the showing's over around 9, 9.30 tonight, uh, there's going to be a group out doing, doing, doing a candlelight vigil. So it's sad and that, to see. And that group, I'm sure, is being led there. by you. What's that? I said, I'm sure that group is being led by you. No, no, I don't have anything to do with the group. No, <laughs> I, I won't be out there tonight, but I support them. I've been, we've seen all the movies there currently. We go there, we've been going there for at least two to three times a month over mm -hmm. the last couple of years. So it's sad to see it go. Yeah, it's been such a staple and icon in in Houston for as long as I remember, obviously. And yeah. that's where I saw Rocky Horror at midnight. Ooh, and a lot of us did. Yeah, a lot of us did. It's a rite of passage, y'all. Um, but getting back to tomorrow's uh, show, um, we'll be joined by Michael Flanagan of the HCC's drama department um, to talk about what they're up to this semester. So last year, they brought us some great virtual offerings such as scenes from screens. Yeah. Um, so that should be interesting to find out what's going on for them this semester. All right, that wraps up the show for today. Brittany, we'll see you next week. All right. You'll be back, what, Wednesday of next week? Uh, you know, as long as everything goes okay. Yeah, I, I'm okay. pretty sure I'll be back. Somewhat of a uh, shaky uh, shaky uh, commitment. But anyway, <laughs> we'll see Brittany next week. Most importantly, we'll see you, to, you tomorrow live right here and up to the minute at 10 a.m.